I've been working for on a book for a short while called uh, Prophecy and Context. I felt uh, that if I took on the prophecies or the supposed prophecies that appear in, in Nach, I could make sense out of them. Because people typically get one rendition of, of what the prophets are trying to tell us or even what appears in the writings. And that's that's what what is uh, told over by counter-missionaries. Specifically, most people don't know that before Tovia Singer made it big in the counter-missionary world, there was another counter-missionary. Uh, I think he taught at Ezra Torah Academy. His name was Gerald Siegel. And he came out with a book called The, the Jew and the Christian Missionary. Well, anyways, so most people only know the opinions of these two counter missionaries, and that like solidified what Jews think the the prophets are telling them in in the art scroll Feldheim world, meaning in the Balchiva slash convert world. I don't think people who are very yeshivish uh, study the prophets to begin with. I mean, they'll read the Haftorahs, but they they really, I mean, if anything, they'll try to make connections on how they elucidate what actually appears on like in that week's Parsha, but not in any way trying to understand what a prophecy is, what a prophecy isn't, who is this individual that's being spoken about here, right? I mean, specifically the Messiah. The notion of the Messiah for sure doesn't clearly appear in the Torah. If it appears anywhere, not clearly, but clearer, it's in the books of the prophets. So I was trying to make a connection, like who who's this individual? Because the notion of Mashiach, Hamashiach doesn't appear by the prophets. That word never appears. However, we do see this Superman appear out of nowhere, right? This guy who, in some way, in in one instance, comes in the clouds, and another like another instance, is able to stand on the Mount of Olives, and this is clearly not a human, okay? And however, we see. Chazal, we see Uncleus, we see, I mean, specifically, I guess, with, with the most influential rabbis, the Rambam, trying to harness that and fit it into some figure they call the Messiah. It seems only to, to keep Judaism from, from straying into some anthropomorphic rendition of, of a Hebrew God. Uh, but however, if you try to make the role of this Superman figure fit into what the Rambam likes to call just the Jewish king, because the Rambam in Sefer Mitzvot, in terms of believing in Mashiach, that's that's the source, that's the Makor, according to the Rambam, of everything we we expect from the Messiah, it's what we expect from a king, a special king, because he says that that a king could be from any Shevet, from any tribe, but Mashiach, Mamish, has to be from, from Shevet Yehuda uh, via David. So it's it's like a super king. However, that's not what we see in the prophets. And it's hard to believe uh, that whoever wrote the books of the prophets, and there's a Tosefta that says that it was written by the basin of Heskiyal Melech. I don't know if that's something that we have to believe. Um, it seems that whoever wrote this rendition of the Superman that appears in the books of the prophets had no inkling that he's supposed to be some sort of earthly king. Yes, he's supposed to be like King David, but it seems that if you were looking for any sort of trend of uh, what the Israelites were specifically waiting for, within the narrative of the prophets, it seems that it was an anthropomorphic understanding of God. It seems that that's, that's the most logical conclusion. And the only way, the way you'll be able to see that is if you really put yourself in the position that you know nothing. Forget about what you heard about the Rambam. Forget about what your rabbi told you. We have to understand that the early Israelites weren't as sophisticated as we are today. Philosophically, they had no issue assuming that God had, had body parts, that God had a shape. Right? Because they'll tell you, no, no, of course, that's not the way it is. Why? Because the Rambam says it, because the Ramban, because Rashi says it. But these are much, much later rabbis. It's hard to, to um, in some way, assume that the early Israelites were so philosophically sophisticated that they in no way wanted to limit God. They had no issue with limiting God, the early Israelites. I think you would come to the conclusion when the Torah itself doesn't really elucidate such rules. Right? I think if the Torah itself wanted us to be so sophisticated, like the Rambam using all these this, this Aristotelian thought, it would have mentioned something more of, of possibly us not limiting God, but it doesn't. It doesn't. What's the closest thing you have, right? Up on the mountain, you saw nothing. You saw no form, no shape. I mean, that's not enough to keep someone 
uh, at least according to the Rambam, as keeping their chelik and olam it, it's 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 not enough. So it seems that what the Israelites started doing, they actually believed that, that God was going to come down and fight wars in their behalf. Virtually any instance of the supermensch, of the superman that appears in the prophets that we call the Messiah nowadays, but nowhere in the text does it refer to him being any sort of Israelite king, was actually God himself that people thought was going to come down, right? I mean, they had this 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 relationship with God uh, that they heard all the stories. It says, build me a house that I may dwell among you, right? That uh, that the angel of, of the Lord that essentially, according to the context, is God himself will go before you and fight your wars and all the stuff. Even in the times of like of Yeshiau, when when the Israelites woke up and, and God himself killed 25, I think it was 25,000 Assyrians, right? Physically killed them, you know, or or or. The angel of death, which later on is is considered God Himself or an extension of God Himself, right? A malach is essentially, according to the context of the Torah, not a separate being, right? Because that itself would be a bit dualistic, but it seems to be an extension of God Himself. This is just me thinking out loud. The trend I see there is that the idea of the Messiah was the the personage of the Messiah was developed later to, in some way, harness the character that the the early israelites were waiting for which was essentially god in human form i'm not saying as a man but as a shape and for sure as a person There's, a person doesn't necessarily have to be a man i think in 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 what legalese a corporation has the status of a person uh now of course the rambam would try to harness that idea and say no no absolutely not any any anthropomorphic vision we have of God in, in, in Nach only occurs in a vision. God can be limited in, in, in such a manner. For some reason, Chazal had no issue limiting God, right? We have the whole, I mean, the famous Ravid in Hilchas Chuba that he tells the Rambam, where the Rambam says that anyone, anyone who believes that God has a shape or a body, that they lose their share in the world to come. The Ravid said, how can you say this when rabbis bigger than you believe that God had a body and had a shape? Not not like Basar Vadam, but but uh, like uh, shape, right? I mean, they were corporealists, right? Uh, Rashi and his students, uh, Toast folks, and their sayings that they believed God had a shape. Now, I'm not convinced that God has a shape or that God could become a man, right? However, it's hard not to see the trend of what the early Israelites used to believe. You could see the trend and and still, from the comfort of your house in Miami Beach, say yes they were wrong but it's clearly that this is what they believed unless someone thinks that i'm trying to endorse christianity or anything they teach however it seems that they were the ones who actually went on a ledge when everyone was was enthralled with aristotelian thought taught through the muslims because it's essentially islam that really made it popular although we see it somewhat in early uncleus Right, Uncleus kind of goes out of his way to really dispel any notion of any anthropomorphic notion of God, right? And the notion of tikkun sofrim uh, that possibly Ezra changed verses in the Torah to make it seem like that God didn't really have uh, human body parts. Fine, but the vast majority of Israelites believed God had a shape, believed that God had an arm. I mean, it says it by Chazal that he wears tefillin, he wears a talis, right? I mean, clearly these weren't people. Who like who studied more Navuchim, like the guide for the perplexed every day? I mean, for sure not. But people have to be extremely honest to what appears in the text. 